This is um, another load of the uh, video. I didn't get the voiceover last time. Um, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at um, webcam. At the um, base of the uh, five axis robot. The robot actually fits in this area here. <laughs> but we're just looking at one axis. So inside of here we've got sensor. Markers under this tray. A marker under the tray and some limit markers. Inside the gearbox, we've got a gearbox mod, so we can do some counting. How does that all work? We've got a language which is called G code, international standard, blah blah. Um, and these codes mean things like this one here, which is move the axis. Move the axis again, move the axis again. These are all incremental commands, I told you that wrong. That's a G95, which is a speed command. G91 is a move command, G91 is a move command, and then check the back at home, and at home is at that spot there. We do that in one direction, then we do it in another. So what happens is, we're getting, this is converted via a post-processor, um, and it's down here, which has just converted it, and it converted it into the um, robot um, command, so that they can be interpreted at high speed, or some speed, what we can see is a slow speed version because I've got the screen on it so I can see some debug. Um, and then that's passed across to the RS232 interface. Um, right, so what we're going to see is when we're, I'm going to execute it. Um, it, runs a, it runs a process to post processes again. Uh, so it does it each time. And then it hands it across. But, but what we're going to see is a green box pop up like that it's already processed it into a nice file called t.txt and now we're actually moving the command we can see the commands are zipping past at some speed so that was a move clockwise and counterclockwise and what it's now doing is finding the home position and further commands there we go it's done it so it's gone uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, and found the home position in both cases. Let's just put some commands in. Let's just take this one out of here. For instance, we can put an MOO, which is essentially an axis stop. Axis stop, well, it's, a, it's a program stop. And then if you run it now, it will quickly post process out. And it will move it out and then stop. If you look at the code, it's now held on that MOO, it's waiting for a button press. Or micro switch, which I do, and it gets back a 200, which is, um, and then it gets another. Um, if I put two MRIs in, it's stupid of me, and then we're back at home. It's now moving on through the code. Once that's completed, we'll take those MRIs out. And you can see that the robot's gone back in. I overshoot it on purpose just to make it work. It works in both directions. It's just more accurate to do it in the other direction and we can test that we can take that out and we'll move in 3500 in the negative direction so if we move 500 in the, in the, in the clockwise direction we can run the processor currently opening up the rs232 and we'll see the backlash in the gearbox in a moment no, it's not just a backlash in the gearbox, it's a backlash in the sensor. And so we can see that error there, that's why I always bring it in that one direction. And so I can get around that little problem. Um, let's just do some clever stuff. Let's just show you some repeat code. So what I'm going to do is put some repeat code in. I can make pieces of the code run more than one time. So I'm going to say to it, repeat this piece of code maybe two times. So I've got an M97 which is a repeat code. G10 is a programmatic code to say go do um, something, a bit of repeat. It's just running it. The beauty of this process is I can actually pause so I can actually see what's going on. There's the 
C200 coming back from pickaxe 6. There's um, five pickaxe on all, all in talking. Uh, pickaxe 6 is the command, is the major one. And it waits for a code 200 before we move on. So I've used the internet code, so I get 401s, 404s, etc. etc. And we can see up here that the I put some debug in, so it just be it was previously told to move in a clockwise direction of 15. So from those codes there, for those who know a bit of um, hexadecimal and how the pickaxe works, that code here is essentially a move clockwise 1500, not hard. And there we go again. And it's going to repeat that code again because we told it to move. We told it to repeat that code twice. So what I've done is put that one code in, I get a repeat, and I can do that lots of times in the code. Now we should revert back to the other code, which is the original code, which is the clockwise move. There we end this video.